I feel like it's one of those things where like, this is my weapon, is the weapon of forcing you guys to waste your time. Welcome to the internet, I'll be your host. You're watching the slightly less hated uh, crit show. Hey! I don't even know how to feel right now. I'm so used to all the vitriol. Uh, can you guys like uh, give it to me a little bit? Just one more time for old time's sake. I'm actually asking the trolls to do this, what they do best. I'm not gonna read it anyway, but I figure it would be a great way for you to waste your time. Hey, we're making a video game. Did you guys know that? Probably. Well, uh, you wanna see some of it? Cause the Kickstarter is gonna be coming up very soon. And Will, one of the head developers, uh, along with a lot of the uh, community have been working on this and we, uh, you know, we're coming along. So let's just give you guys a quick two minute update on what's happening with the Zweihander game. Will, what's going on, man? Hey, <laughs> doing good. So uh, yeah, Will's been uh, cranking away at this along with a lot of the members of the community and uh, making minor changes. Uh, we had him in the middle of the screen, but um, let's uh, let's move him down to give it a different feel. This is a side-scrolling game, uh, Unreal Engine, and it's uh, 2D in a 3D world. And so we've got a 2D spline going through there. Just changing the uh, Z offset to 128 from uh, you know normally 100. Coming back in, and all of a sudden now he is. Much lower on the screen and it feels, there we go. Oh, that feels a lot better. There we go, now we're side scrolling. <laughs> we got trees up here, see this is why we have to work on this. This is why this is uh, not even alpha. Inventory, check that action. He's got apples and meat. And over here there's the uh, player and the equipment, check this action. Now there'll be an avatar here, correct? Once we're done? Yep. Yeah, we'll put an avatar right there so you can see what's on your avatar. 1,000 health points, we'll probably change that as well. Yeah, that's a lot Just, harder. Just right now, so we don't die. So what, what's going on is that the uh, the character is walking around here, and we can see uh, that there's this little dummy. Well, that's like the homing beacon, right? So the homing beacon um, kind of tells like how the camera to line up and everything. So if I'm facing that way, like it'll just snap to the other way. So what this does, it allows the um, camera target. This is what we call the camera target to sort of like gradually track that particular um, thing, so that sort of invisible beacon, so that when you're actually looking at the game, you want the view to be not centered on the player, you want it to be like anticipating the space in front of him, so that, you know, like you can see enemies and stuff. So as you can see what I was talking about when I used the scroll wheel, this will be set to triggers in the game, like when this would really, um, when you would want this to happen. But right now if I scroll back, See that that intelligent dummy is moving to keep the player in the same spot on the screen as we kind of like pull back for like a nice vista shot, All right? So this is like you've discovered a town or something. Yes, and then and it might you know have letters on the screen right. like you know, um, Bob's Ple house. Pleasantville. Whatever, yeah, you know. Pleasantville. I just don't understand why everything has to look like a Street Fighter character. Like let him sit there, look at him like just swaying and breathing. Never understood that. So we'll have to do some custom animations, but for the Kickstarter, we're just going to use some default animations, and then we'll do the custom ones afterwards when we have the time. Materials. Whoa, this is nice coming. looking. So I'm editing, uh, I'm editing the, the video right now where I'm going to throw some footage of this in. I wanted to get him in with his clothes on, this is cool. So you just got him climbing around, so this is already like Skyrim Simulator because now he's jumping up on the tables. <laughs> Breaking everything. Alright, so if that wasn't the best thing you've ever seen, let me know. Um, and, and keep watching till the end because we may have some uh, stuff to give away. Could be earwax, could be a new graphics card, I don't know. But if you don't watch till the end, I'm gonna fill your house with about a foot and a half of water and then I'm gonna turn loose about 40 cats in that house. Have you ever seen cats in water? That's what your entire house is gonna be like. So you're gonna watch till the end and subscribe and like and all that stuff. That's your job now. All right, moving right along. Uh, this is an interesting YouTube video here about a, um, a court case that's happening currently in Arkansas. Uh, someone was dead, but the bottom line here with this court case is that Amazon Echo could be used um, as part of the, I guess, evidence, or they, they could subpoena the Amazon Echo. And if you don't know what Amazon Echo is, it's a device that sits in your house that's strangely cylindrical, looks like a fat, uh, fat black Pringles can. And no jokes, it all could be made from that. Um, so it sits there and it, it only listens when you talk to it and Amazon says, oh, you know, it only records stuff for a little while. This is gonna be the big chunky one, so I'll go a little bit longer on this one. Um, but I guess what I wanna talk about with this is, yeah, this thing is sitting there in the house. Now, some lawmakers and some lawyers and, uh, you know, some people like that are saying like, well, of course, these things should be admissible in court. They should be used for court cases. Um, and the reason being, wherever there's one of these things, you will be safe. You will be okay. Everyone will know, oh, you're recording everything. There's an Amazon Echo over there, or there's one of the, you know, there's something else. I don't know, maybe a, a Nest microphone. I don't know what all the different devices are because I don't have one, but, you know, Google Home or whatever. One of those devices is in this house. So 
Everything that you do and say is going to be recorded and can be used in court against you. So when you walk in, you're like, oh, as long as I'm not doing anything bad, this is going to be here to protect me. And if we suddenly say that these things are not allowed to be used as evidence, well, all of a sudden we're creating these quote unquote, as they've said here, safe zones for criminals where they go and they're like, I don't have anything to worry about. No one's listening to me. No one knows anything about what I'm doing. So there's gonna be this strange battle that goes on over the next few years. But as this happens, the technology always goes faster than, you know, like the, the policy. So technology is faster than policy always. And also technology is faster than the understanding that these guys have. So let me just paint a little picture of the world in 10 years down the road now that the internet of things or the internet of shit as we'll find out later uh, has completely taken over. You have your refrigerator, your, uh, your toaster, your garage door, your car, all with the ability to listen to you all the time. And it's making your life so damn convenient because you can just sit down and be like, car, can you get me a coffee ready at the office? It'll turn on your coffee maker. Car, how hot is it? Um, you know, like, hey, fridge, how are we doing on mustard? Should we get some more mustard on Amazon? Let's order some more freaking mustard, because that's what Amazon's for, I don't know. That world where everything is listening, now let's just imagine that that's all there, and then let's imagine that the courts just say, you know what, all this stuff, it's good. We need to be able to hear all this stuff. So beyond just the regular marketing stuff where Amazon and Google knows everything about you, they know about your hemorrhoids. They're gonna start recommending Preparation H and other things in your email and you can't do anything about it. They know all about it. So the marketing thing, move that aside. Now lawmakers are able to subpoena all these devices. What kind of world is that? I'm not gonna speculate on my take on this thing, but I wanna know what you guys think in the comments because I see that as a direction that we are kind of going in because it's a reckless technology first and policy second, and then when the policy catches up, they don't understand and make the wrong decisions. That's the big article today. Something for you guys to chew on. Let's move along and talk about Apple. Apple, Apple, Apple. Apple is fighting your right to maintain and repair your own devices. There's a lot of different states right now that are coming out and saying, hey, everyone should have the right to repair their own device. And so Apple needs to make available tools and resources so that they can repair their devices. And Apple has come back with some ridiculous, ridiculous things. Like for one thing, they're like, oh, well, you know what? The broken glass on a the screen there, yeah, they can't, com they can't repair that because they might cut their little fingers. That's one thing that they've said. They've also said, People shouldn't have the right to repair because what if they open up their phone and it explodes because they're lifting high on batteries? Apple has an incredibly low view of you people. They think you're all idiots. Can we let them get away with it? Are we gonna let them get away with it? We all need the right to repair. If you can't repair your device, you don't own it. You're just renting it from Apple. And that's the bottom line because Logan said so. <laughs> I was having a good day until just now. So Tony Stark has Jarvis and IBM now has having. Father and son team, 11 year old kid, uh, Evan Sp Spizak. Yo, Spizak, what's up, man? I, I don't like when you say my name that way. What's up, Spiz? Yeah, the Spiz Biz. That'll be the great business, but never mind. Uh, so Havoc is this interesting, Havoc, Haven, H-A-V-Y-N, like Haven, I guess I'm calling it Haven, but because I started off with a bad pun. It's actually Haven with a Y because Y looks cooler than E. They're trying to like figure out how to deal with the fact that you get like 200,000, you know, like malware updates, security updates, virus updates, just all this online security stuff is always happening at the same time. Humans cannot keep up with this, but IBM Watson probably could keep up with this. So this father and son team put together something where they could just talk to it and quickly get diagnosed, diagnostics, diagnostics, and they, they named it Haven. Haven. Why do I keep saying Haven? My damn pun. You're having a bad day about this. <laughs> I'm really having a terrible time with this name. I mean, Haven, I'm having a terrible time. Oh God, we need to cut this in Haven. These puns, the punishment. Anyway, the whole idea here with this is that the researchers and stuff, they um, could now, instead of just trying to process all this data themselves and organize it all themselves, IBM Watson could organize it and they can come in in the morning and be like, uh, Haven, what are the new threats for last night? So this is, you know, it's in development right now, but in the future, this could be a very helpful tool. Um, and I mean, IBM Watson, the whole idea with that also is that you could take that interface and just throw it at so many different things because it's, it's a massively multi-cored piece uh, of artificial intelligence that did a very good job at Jeopardy, but can also be used to analyze massive amounts of data on a scale that no human can do. So this Haven project is pretty cool. Hey, I got it right once, let's move on. You know Baron, Mr. Baron? Hey, he's a super rich investor guy. He is speculating that the Tesla stock could be worth one trillion, I don't do that thing, uh, one trillion dollars. And his basis for that is, well, first off, Elon Musk has said so, and whatever Elon Musk says usually happens, right? Because remember, remember, 
he's from another planet and all that, and I'm not going to get the tinfoil hat out, it's just true. Um, but anyway, he's saying that by, you know, I don't know, the next 15 years, it could be worth a trillion dollars. That's bigger than Apple, that's bigger than Google. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that they, they merge with SolarCity, a lot of the ideas. Uh, Tesla's growing extremely quickly. Uh, and just the speed at which they innovate um, is pretty ridiculous. And now that they're part of Solar City and solar is going crazy and they're developing these new solar voltaic cells that look a lot like ceiling, or not ceiling tiles, a lot like uh, roof tiling. It's really nice stuff and it's a very, very efficient uh, thing. So, I don't know, buy stock, it's really expensive. It's like over $200 right now, but he's saying it's gonna go way up from that. Cisco's uh, CEO is sitting down talking about the future of artificial intelligence, but he's mostly talking about the internet of things. Uh, and he calls it artificial stupidity, but we're going to call it the Internet of Shit. And he's warning against um, all the security problems that we have with the Internet of Things and everything being connected. And he said that the problem here is all these devices that you have talking to one another are all connected through APIs, and APIs are subject to whatever humans create to go between them to let them talk together. So you've got a, a nice wooden fence like this, and the wooden fence is probably going to keep out, you know, some large fauna, you know? Is a dog considered fauna? I don't know. Um, but it's not going to keep out the viruses that want to get through all the holes in that fence. What he's saying we need to do is he wants to create integrated systems and basically looks like he wants to get his hands on everything and create and like them be in charge of the interconnects. And that's great for a business, but the question here for me is how is that going to allow people to innovate? I know the Internet of Things is incredibly insecure. For me, I'm just going to stay away from most of it. But we need some sort of a different solution that doesn't allow one company to come in and be like, no, 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 you have to have partnerships and the partnerships with all these companies have to exist and then we have to control the way things work together for security reasons. So it looks like he's throwing the idea of security out there as the idea of their business becoming bigger and bigger and, and the Internet of Things world. And I don't think that's exactly the answer, but I don't have the real answer because I'm not the smartest person on the Internet. That's probably someone with a much bigger beard on 4chan or something who doesn't have a job. I'm taking a stab at you, but in real life, I would really stab you. Oh God! Oh no, Justin's here! You're not wearing enough black! <laughs> I'm fucking sick of this! Do you even Linux, bro? Yeah. Do you? Not, even? Not, 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 not as much as everyone would like me to. Which is always so... No, not enough for your standards, everybody. Ugh. What are we talking about first? I'm talking about pigs. Mm, or lack thereof. Yeah, lack of pigs, but pigs. But pigs. But yep. pigs. So uh, there is a company that is growing meat. Um, and this is kind of in reference to that article that we talked about a couple crit shows ago where they were making the, the meatless burgers that were right. serving in New York City. So this is kind of another company that's doing it as well. And they're doing lab-grown uh, muscle tissue, essentially, that they can then use to turn into meat instead of actually using an animal. Now here's the big breakthrough here that's going to make this more feasible. Right now it's a, a ways off from actually uh, mm -hmm. uh, being, I guess, easier to produce and cheaper uh, as far as, you know, it's the like resources involved than regular off, meat. they said, or something like uh, that. Something so, like that, yeah. yeah. But they have now created a key element. So they get their stem cells and they put it on the thing and they make the, the muscle. Uh, mm -hmm. But they've always had to use something called animal serum, right? <laughs> it sounds like some cheesy thing from a Homestar yeah. Runner parody, like, did you bring me the animal serum? They're like, oh no, I'm running out of animal serum. How can I fight Dr. Colossus? <laughs> I, need, I need my boar serum. Yeah, it's uh, very boring. Um, so anyway, they have now been able to synthesize the animal serum, synthetic animal serum. This is like the best stuff that you could use for a, you know, a B-grade sci-fi film. Yep. So anyway, they've been able to synthesize the animal serum, therefore removing the whole animal element from that stage of the production um, and making it even more feasible but then the big thing with all this stuff is going to be the social stigma of like, eh, that was grown in a lab, yeah. it didn't come off of an animal. That's not natural. <laughs> yeah, well, neither is whatever I don't that... want you eating meat, but I don't want you eating fabricated meat either. Well, then what about seitan, huh? Yeah. That's weird, too. That's more processed that, than the meat I eat. And like always, the biggest problem is going to be people. Taste, I mean, what if it doesn't yeah. taste the same? But who knows? Who knows? I mean, those burgers that they have in New York, people can't even tell the difference, apparently. Really? So that's what they're saying about them. Wow. It's because they, they've isolated the protein that actually accounts for that taste and the redness color in meat, uh -huh. or in beef specifically. I guess maybe pork's a little different, but... I, don't I mean, know. people have really high standards for what bacon needs to taste like, so... I could see why this would be like a particularly choosy... Right, and uh, not ready to go crazy if it's not, you know... <clears throat> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and something Needs about to say I was on the internet in minutes registering my complaints. <laughs> 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 this is not bacon. Speaking of growing 
uh, meat, can we grow woolly mammoths? And then can we eat them? Yes. I mean, what does elephant taste like anyway? I wonder, it probably mm. tastes about the same, right? Maybe, probably gamey. Gamey? I don't know. <laughs> that's the term for elephant. How is that? How is that? <laughs> gamey hey, tastes like, how is that? I, that's what elephant tastes like. That's like saying the word edgy. Like, what does edgy mean? I mean, to like, you know, a, a soccer mom from the Midwest, edgy is like a guy with a piercing. Yeah. But like to <laughs> someone who, who lives in a bondage dungeon, edgy is someone who cuts themselves and drinks the blood. That's pretty edgy. That's true. So edgy is like, is it gamey? I, don't, is that... I thought edging was black and red colors. <laughs> oh, that's edgy for gamers. That's you... true. <laughs> is that one of those, uh, it's, yes. Cut your money for uh, Short so, answer, yes. I'm, uh, that was the Russian robot inside me that's been installed by the administration currently oh, in nice. power. Cool. So, yeah, so there is a company that is trying to well, do... Mostly George Church. Yeah, mostly yeah, just George Church. Harvard, Harvard, Harvard University. People. Yeah, Harvard University. That's a company, I guess. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the company of Harvard. The company of Harvard. Yeah. In the company of Harvard University, we find ourselves looking at mammoths. Um, so... Uh, we're Jurassic Parking here. Well, the thing here with this is that, you know, they, they don't want to... Um, the, be the best, I guess, scenario would be to take these embryos and put them into, like, the northern Chinese elephants and stuff, but those mm -hmm. are uh, on the endangered list, and they don't want to, you know, deal yeah. with, you know, the embryos inside those. So they were they, they are creating trying to create ways so that they can, you know, get the fetus, get the embryo, and grow it in a lab, which is, you know, technology that we don't have yet, but that is what they want. We are not focusing on enough technology of growing mammoths. Church also argues that this could be a, a way to combat global warming of all things, uh, because what mammoths did back in the day in the tundras and stuff is them moving through the ice actually aerated things that would allow more cold air to come up through. So by re-releasing mammoths across the plains and having them be able to trudge through the ice once more, it will actually release up more cold air that will prevent less glacier melt. I want to bring back a lot of the things that we hunted to extinction, like the mammoth and the aurochs are the two mm. big things. And giant was, sloths. Sloths, bring them back. Yes. Mammoths, auroths, and auroths. Or, that's a that's a giant orox. Uh, that's a giant yeah. um, cow. Uh, bull bull sloth. An auroth. Auroth. That's a that's a combination. What have we done? We played God. Prey. Uh, so PC gamer got their hands on prey. Yep. And uh, I think we need to stop and pray for this yeah. game. Which, if you recall, in a previous crit show, we talked about how the developers at Prey said that when it comes out, it is going to be. Perfect. 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 And that's a lot of that is because Dishonored 2 came out and it was mm. not perfect. In Less fact, in order, than. yes. Even now with the updates, in order for me to play the game correctly at 4K with, you know, GTX 1080, the fastest mm. CPU on the planet, I have to run the game locked at 30 FPS and I still have to turn off some of the lighting effects. Mm. Locking the game at 30 FPS strangely gets rid of a lot of the stutter, but then I'm playing on a fucking PC. Why am I playing at 30 FPS? Bethesda with your yeah. void engine. That's a take on the id tech technology engine. Mm. They should they rewrote the engine too much. I think the id tech engine was good. Why did they rewrite seventy percent of it? I don't know. So so basically, what they were saying is that they got to play through the first hour of it, and while it was really good and had some unique, cool features and stuff, and they really liked the shotgun mechanics for some reason, like they were going on and on about that. <laughs> but the other thing too is that it is stuttery. It is glitchy. It texture pop. Yeah, there are some moments to it that are well not perfect. Um, so that being said, uh, it does have a little while before its release date, so they have time. But Arcane Studios has made a really, really huge promise, and now really, really has to deliver on it, or else they're going to be really, really fucked. That's what you. <laughs> that's what happens on the internet. If you promise something, I don't know anything about that. Yeah. <laughs> you don't deliver 130 percent. You're done. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So speaking of delivering. Speaking of cool guys. These guys don't even give a shit if they deliver yeah. or not. Valve so, right here, I'll let you take this one. Once again, once again, uh, Lord Gaben has said that he doesn't really care if VR ends up being a complete and utter failure. Granted, they're, uh, they're right now, you know, making the Vive, which is the most expensive VR set on the market right now. It's also probably the coolest, yeah. but you know, they're partnering it, with HTC to make that one. Yeah, yeah. And, it, and it pair, you know, it mostly functions through Steam and everything like that. But even Gabe himself said uh, that it only works like kind of okay at best. Right. Um, so basically, Steam has said, like, yeah, we are definitely taking investments and stuff to, uh, you know, go into the VR, but we'd be perfectly okay if just VR crash and burn and never actually happened. Um, so they're actually planning for that inevitability and saying like, this could easily be a thing too. VR could just crash and burn. It might just never really fully catch on. Um, and so- I think the holodeck thing is what's really, when it's yeah, really gonna catch on. I mean, when... Valve has really been like, they've always been known for kind of making like those weird gambles and stuff that usually end up paying off for them. But- I don't give a shit. Yeah, Gabe doesn't pull his punches. He doesn't mince words. He says what he feels, and he's like, hey, VR could suck. 
it's not that great right now. Sorry, everyone. But I think he's also kind of like not taking into account the fact that like this is the technology that is going to allow us to have sex with our waifus. So never uh, give me my tinfoil. So what's really happening here, guys? <laughs> Gabe knows that the hype surrounding Half-Life 3 is just so hot. It's, it's never going to be able to make a game that lives up to that hype. No matter, he could make the best game that's ever, ever made, and everyone would be like, I guess it was okay. I mean, whatever. So what he's doing now, they're making Half-Life 3 in VR, and he's really greatly downplaying VR, being like, this is shit. This is probably awful. It's, it's just like uh, probably a gamble, not going to work. And then he's going to drop Half-Life 3 a couple of years from now on VR. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be like this immersive experience like you've never seen. And then everyone's going to flock to their nearest computer to buy the Vive 2 that comes out with Half-Life 3 for $800.50. Sounds like he's playing the long con then. Because he even says, it even says in this article that he's like, there is no game possible ever that could cause millions of people to want to go out and buy this thing. That's exactly what I'm talking like, about. So yeah, it's is, it's like maybe he's just being like, yeah, I couldn't think of possibly anything that could come mm. out. Oh, what was this? Half-Life 3 just fell out of my pocket. That's so weird. Oh, and it came with the with the HTC Vive oh. 2 for all this money. Yeah, I'll just let you guys play that over there. See you later. And everyone's like, Bleh. Yep. <laughs> Okay, one inbox question for the day. And this one is from Jeff. Jeff F. Jeff F. Geo. Geo F. Yeah, spell with a G. Is there a movie setting that you've ever wished that you could live in? Example, I've always wanted to live in Neo Tokyo that is in the Neo Tokyo that is Blade Runner, and I have an exact copy of Deckard's apartment. Oh, and have an exact copy. I thought you already had one, that'd be cool. Uh, so much that it's inspired me to look into setting up trips to Akihabara and the like. That'd be interesting. Go over there and take another take a look at it, but I mean I I guess. Blade Runner, isn't it in like Los Angeles? But it does feel very Tokyo-esque or Neo-Tokyo-esque. I don't know, go visit Hong Kong. That's also a place that feels very, um, you know, cyberpunky, but more of an 80s style cyberpunk vibe. Um, that's just a recommendation for you. Uh, Shenzhen has a weird feeling at some some parts of the city, but not really, it's too hot. And then, yeah, just run around, run around uh, Japan. Okay, uh, setting for me, I guess if I could pick any like movie setting or whatever, I would probably pick the Star Trek universe to be in because, um, just the infinite possibility and expandability. And I also, you know, I like the idea of exploring the galaxy. You've got all these other franchises like Star Wars and Babylon 5 and all that stuff. But in all of those, I feel like, uh, well, especially in like Star Wars universe, I feel like the aliens are actually more realistic. You go somewhere and they're not exactly totally humanoid. Some are, some are not. Some of them look weird and some of them go, bitch off, bitch off. And you're like, what the hell did that guy say? But in Star Trek, there's this magical thing called the Universal Translator. So everywhere you go, they just speak English. This hunk of meat that just sits there with the two eyes, it's like, what are you doing? And you're like, oh, it speaks English, great. Because you've got some kind of thing implanted somewhere or so there's a thing in your hand or, I don't know. But it just works. The Universal Translator just works. Also, you're able to, you know, like beam things and, and transport things and you've got all the crazy technology for healing your body and it's a utopian society without money. Uh, so it'd be an interesting universe to live in, explore all these strange new worlds. Go whenever man, no man or woman has ever gone before. Was it no one has ever gone before? Go where no man has gone before. They, did they say no one now? Don't they I say no? That, I think they did change it to no one has gone before. Yeah, no one has gone. Man's a, you know like a metaphor for humanity. Yep. Um, woman and tea, is that what you want? I don't know. I, I don't Person know. Tea. I, I'm everyone's so sensitive and I don't mean to. Anyway, that's where I would live because there's so many interesting things to see and everyone when you get there probably speaks English and you can probably have sex with them all too. I mean, that's just the way it works. I mean, they, they travel around the galaxy and they're like, hey, this cool green thing with strange gills, but they still have the correct anatomical things for me to play with. It's like, okay, that's really weird. I'm just saying like, it's, it's very compatible because a lot of the aliens were metaphors for social situations. But hey, if it's in a real universe and I get to pick and you get to pick because of your question, I'll, I'll try it out. Sounds like you're talking about Captain a Holes a Hole Kirk. <laughs> yes. Um, let me know where you guys would go in the comments. I'm kind of curious about that. And that's pretty much the end of the episode. Salutations to everybody. T-shirts are amazing. They're so soft. You guys don't even understand. Most shirts are plaster. These ain't plaster. So click over there and get those things or else you're going to wake up with six porcupines in your um, in your underwear. And I'm going to make it so that you have to put on your underwear super quick because I'll send the UPS to bang on your door while you're completely naked. And you'll be like, shit, I got to get out there to get the door. And you'll pull on, pull on your underwear with that's full of porcupines that are, you, can't, you didn't know they were there. No, that was a lie. Okay. <laughs> just double check. I just want them to watch to the end. Yeah. Oh, I got it. Sorry. Welcome to the real world. <laughs> yeah, guys. full of disappointment.